All right, what's up, everybody? It's Kami. Welcome back to another JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable anime episode review. Today's episode is July 15th, Thursday, part one. Also, episode 31. Also, the Superfly episode. So, the episode itself starts off with uh, Jotaro and Joseph at the beach talking to Speedwagon Foundation members about finding Kira and stuff. And then it cuts to Josuke with Okuyasu and Koichi talking about um, how they should stay on the lookout for Kira, but how Chetro told them to focus on school and to not worry about stuff too much. Uh, and then after that, we had a cut for Kira's dad, uh, just flying around Morio, uh, saying that he'd find a new stand user, uh, and that he'd find somebody to make it to a new stand user. And then we see him spotting, uh, Kira, walking throughout the crowd of people noticing him, uh, as he looks down at his fingernails, saying, oh, you know, that's my son. There's nothing that'll ever separate a father from his son. And then he also notices Hayato spying on Kira, saying that um, he wouldn't let any of the stand users find Kira and that he'd, you know, keep him safe. And we have the intro play. Uh, and after that, Josuke and Okuyasu are on their way to school and they find Mikitaka on the ground disguising himself as a pair of binoculars. But what he really wanted to do was uh, get their attention by turning into the binoculars so that Josuke could look at this radio tower that was off in the distance saying that he had seen smoke uh, from the middle of the tower so they look at the tower with the binoculars they being Josuke and Okuyasu taking turns between the two and they notice a uh, tea kettle and laundry hanging and a bunch of stuff and then Okuyasu takes the binoculars and he sees uh, somebody reeling a fish in and then he starts to cook it so uh, they notice this same man fly across the tower on a small screw and of course Jojo's really weird but seeing this they instantly recognize him as a stand user uh, and then the man himself notices Josuke and Okuyasu uh, watching him and he points out uh, that oh they're you know they're looking at me they can see me they're probably gonna come over here soon so he kind of just is standing there looking all ominous and menacing and then we have a cut to Koichi running to school and this really tall, dark-skinned guy with white hair uh, puts his hand out and kind of just stops him. And then Koichi screams. Something just happened to Koichi. And we get another cut. And this time it goes back to Okuyasu and Josuke uh, as they're standing next to the tower. The guy's sitting on a toilet on the tower, on a radio tower. Uh, and he tells them to back up or whatever. Uh, or else they're going to get covered in shit and piss. And then piss starts to sprinkle down because the guy has this little... Uh, you know, system going throughout the tower with his toilet so that he can uh, sprinkle these plants with his piss and his shit so it recycles because the guy uh, actually lives there and he bought the abandoned tower for about 100,000 yen and he recycles his plants and stuff and he has a trap set up near these plants so that if any like you know rabbits or any animals come by the plants to go eat them then he can catch them and then kill them and eat them so the guy lives in the tower uh and it's, it's really weird but it's jojo stuff so we don't question it so he goes down uh the tower hanging from a rope just talking to josuke and okuyasu saying that he'd never leave the tower since he can provide himself with everything that he needs within it uh and he's been living in the tower for around three years and he hasn't touched the ground in about a month so he's just been just hanging around this tower doing weird shit and uh josuke is just like oh i have a bad feeling about this we should probably go tell joto or something but he just stays there and he's like all right whatever we're gonna figure this out ourselves then we get another cut going to rohan uh sitting inside of his house he's looking at these pictures of hayato that he has and all these other pictures trying to point out and spot who Kira could be and he notices that in all of these pictures Hayato is uh, hiding behind these pillars with a camera and he's recording and you know Rohan notices oh there's something weird going on with this Kato everywhere and then he like zooms in on the picture and he looks at the tag on Hayato's backpack which says Hayato Kawajiri so now Rohan knows who he is and then uh, looking inside of Rohan's house from a window uh, on the outside is this guy standing with his back against a tree. Now that's important for the next episode that's going to be uh, brought back. I'm not going to mention too much because I don't want to spoil it. Uh, of course, so I'm not going to say that. Uh, or I'm not going to say who he is. But then we get a cut 
to Tomoko uh, going into her house and she's just like taking off her shoes and stuff. She's like, oh, it's quiet, you know, uh, maybe Josuke already left for school. So then she opens her fridge to go and uh, get a bite of her snack and then there's a bite or two in it and she thinks it's Josuke. So she's over here being all pissed like, ah, oh, the damn kid always up to no good and always doing shit. And then uh, she walks away and she's eating her snack with the fridge still open and stuff. The house is extremely dark also, given it's in the morning, but the house is like really dark and the lights are on and stuff. And then uh, that same guy that confronted Koichi earlier is actually sitting at the table now. And Tomoko doesn't notice him there, uh, but he's just sitting at the table and it's being real ominous and stuff. And we get another cut back. And the thing with these cuts in between this episode that I really liked was that uh, you know, it always stated it's like Thursday, July 15th, and it would state the time of these events happening since these events uh, simultaneously happen because, minor spoiler, uh, you know, the guy on the is facing the tree or whatever as a stand user, of course, you should have guessed that by now, um, and the guy that Koichi bumped into and the guy that's at Tomoko's house is also a stand user, and the way these cuts work since these things simultaneously happen between that same morning and then they lead up to these uh, other two arcs happening after um, the cuts did like a really good job of having this uh, you know this is happening and then go back to this time period within the same morning and this is also happening here and this is also happening here so it gives you this really good setup for the next a uh, couple of episodes that we're going to see before we go back into Akira stuff and the ending because that is going to happen since there's only eight more episodes left of the Diamond is Unbreakable anime. So we're supposed to be finishing December 23rd, which will be that Friday. And it's really cool that these cuts are, you know, happening throughout the episode. And they did a really good job with that to kind of just foreshadow the next uh, couple of episodes since they're these little mini arcs. But we go back to Guy at the Tower. Uh, and he drops a photograph in his pocket, and then Josie's like, oh shit, he looks closely at the, um, at the photograph, and he notices it's Kira's dad inside the same, you know, picture. He starts running towards him, and he runs into the tower, and when he runs into the tower, the guy inside the tower is like, ha, Josuke, you idiot, you stepped into my stand, Superfly. Now his stand, Superfly, is the tower, and I was thinking they were gonna change it since the episode was July 15th or whatever. Uh, and for some reason, I thought that's what they were going to call the stand, but it was just, a, you know, the day in the morning that it happened. So I'm kind of happy that they didn't change Superfly. It would have been really weird if they did change Superfly. But uh, Josuke tries to chase Kira's dad as he's flying away. And when he goes uh, halfway out of the tower, half of his body is out. Um, part of his body starts to turn to metal. And then... The Superfly user tells Josuke that he can't escape the tower unless someone else comes in and if they try to force their way out, they turn uh, into the tower and they become a part of it. So, um, and Kira's dad is like, oh, this Toyohiro guy, which is the guy inside the tower, is like, you know, he's, uh, he's gonna do a good job or whatever. He's got them. I'm safe. I can go find Kira and I can go help him. So he just goes away. Uh, and then Toyohiro tells Josuke that he can't control Superfly himself, so Josuke is pretty much stuck inside the tower. Uh, Mikitaka says that he wants to help, but Okuyasu is being hard-headed, and he's just like, whatever, I got this myself. So him and Josuke start rapid punching the tower, uh, and Toyohiro is not really phased much by it. They're thinking that they're going to do something to him by breaking the tower, uh, but then he states to them that the tower is draining their power, and it's going to reflect it back. And all of a sudden, uh, their hits are reflected back, and then Toyohiro also mentions to them that the stand is independent and killing him wouldn't affect the stand uh, so there's no point in trying to do that and then it turns out uh, that this wire that Toyo Hero was hanging from because he was hanging from a wire the whole time uh, while he was you know telling them this was actually uh, Mikitaka so he pushes Toyo Hero back into the tower and allows uh, you know Josuke to escape in this time frame so Josuke gets out of the tower and then uh, because Toyo Hero is already a weird guy you know, living inside of a radio tower for about three years and doing all the shit that he does. He had these really big, weird calluses on his hands. And for some reason, he has a knife inside of the callus in his hand. So he pulls the knife out and he tries to cut the wire to Andrew Mikitaka. Uh, but the wire that he was hanging from at that moment wasn't Mikitaka. Uh, and it was part of the tower. Uh, but this actually ended up backfiring. Uh, 
causing Mikitaka to get injured. And uh, it ended up pushing Mikitaka back against the wall. Where, well, not the wall, but part of the tower where Toyohiro throws a couple screws at him. And he pretty much just screws him into the tower. And then uh, Toyohiro's just standing there saying, you know, nobody's going to be able to escape. You guys are just like stuck here. Your friend is stuck here. You guys can't get me. And then it just cuts back to Rohan's house. Uh, and Rohan goes to answer his door. And it's the guy from earlier that I mentioned that was standing outside when he was looking at the pictures and shit. Uh, then we get another cut uh, back to Josuke's house where it's still in the kitchen, but the fridge is just open. And nobody's in there and it's still really dark and it's just, that's it. Then we get another cut back to where Koichi was earlier uh, on his way to school on the side of the road. But it's just Koichi's bag behind a bush. So Koichi's not there anymore. And then the episode ends with Kira, uh, or I should say Kosaku, quote unquote, at his job just doing his work. But his nails start to grow uh, as he's working. If you guys remember before, uh, Kira stated, you know, whenever he starts to get these murderous tendencies and his murderous feeling, his killing intent, his nails start to grow. So you can slowly start to see that he's starting to get his killing attempt back. And then we get the last final cut to Hayato uh, sitting in his classroom saying that he'll find out whoever this Kira guy is no matter what and whoever the guy impersonating is that is. So if you guys enjoyed the video, uh, go ahead and feel free to leave a like. Uh, comment down below any you know thoughts on today's episode. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, that would be really great to know. Of course, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll be uploading more Judge's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, content, you know, talking about different stand abilities, plot holes, uh, you know, different characters, comparing characters, talking about the different parts. I'm working on a lot of videos right now uh, that'll be going out. By the way, my upload schedule will be, of course, every Friday I'll have a Diamond is Unbreakable uh, anime episode review until the anime ends. And then Mondays and Friday, or Mondays and Wednesdays, I'll be uploading every other video. Uh, this Monday, I'm going to have a top five uh, favorite stands video go up and on Wednesday I'll probably have something else go up but that's just the idea for now I might upload on Sundays it depends on if I have a video or not uh, but just know that there definitely will be a video for me on Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays so thank you guys for watching now we'll see you guys next time peace